So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Shabbat and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the scroll, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of Yahuwah is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to preach the acceptable year of Yahuwah. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed upon him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is this not Yosef's son? And he said to them, You will surely say this proverb to me, Physician, heal yourself. Whatever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also hear in your country. Then he said, Assuredly, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a great famine throughout all the land. But to none of them was Elijah sent except Zarephath in the region of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman, the Syrian. Then all those in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose up and thrust him out of the city, and led him to the brow of the hill, a cliff, on which their city was built, that they might throw him down over the cliff. Then passing through the midst of them, he went his way. This is the fourth video in the Kitisa series. The first three videos were kind of the style of a courtroom, where we look at our preconceived notions as being the judgmental prosecuting attorney, um, basically prosecuting the brethren, and where I have attempted to bring you guys along with me in being the defending attorney to use righteous judgment in looking at their actions. If you haven't seen those videos, there should be links on the screen popping up and in the description box. So we've, we've righted Moses, Aaron, and the people, our view of them and where they were. Now let's backpedal and put this into real solid reality. Yes, their hearts were in the right place, but every single one of them was weak. Why were they weak? It's because they hadn't been empowered yet. Is it Yeshua's purpose to empower his people? That's the question here. And I'm going to say the obvious answer is yes. That, that uh, scripture I just read there, that you heard, that is the, the first thing that Yeshua publicly announced before going to do his mission. Just like a corporation has a mission statement, Yeshua also has his mission statement, and that was it. This is what I have come to do. This is what I have been anointed to do. And then he goes out and spends several months doing it. Where did he get that from? He got it from the scroll of Isaiah. In our Isaiah chapter 61, 1 through 3, it announces very, the very first thing he says is, The Spirit of Yah, Elohim. He calls um, the Holy Spirit. This is all about God. His spirit is upon me. Why is he upon me? Because he has anointed me. Okay, he's upon me because he's anointed me. What has he anointed me to do? And then there's three things here. This is a two-fold mission. The first mission is rescue. The second mission is empowerment. Here in Kitisa, it's the fulcrum point. We start to see things shift from rescue to empowerment. Part of empowerment is handling responsibilities. Moses got angry. So did Yah. Yah handled his anger differently than Moses did. Just because Moses throwing down the tablets means that the law was removed from the people who weren't responsible with it and that was a good thing, doesn't mean that Moses throwing down the tablets was a good thing. It just means that Yah is graceful. Now, we have Moses being on the right track but messing up. We have Aaron 
Break off those earrings out of your family's ears and bring them to me. But then he wasn't strong enough to overcome the intentions of the wicked crowd. On the right track, but messing it up. Then Yah kills the 3,000 really, really wicked men, and we're left with the people who aren't super bad apples. And we can see that when, they're, when they are told God doesn't want to have anything to do with you anymore, they don't look at the world as being their oyster. They go into time out. They go into mourning. All of them were on the right track. All of them appreciated their rescue. All of them had a heart for God, but they weren't empowered yet. Here are the three things that he announces here about how his rescue works. So the Spirit of God is upon Yeshua. The Spirit of God is upon Yeshua because he has anointed him. He has anointed him with the purpose of preaching good tidings to the poor. So we've got poor, good tidings are preached to them. He was sent to, and is sent, to take people who have been brokenhearted and to heal them. That's another form of rescue. And then people who are in captivity to proclaim liberty to them. Those are the three points of rescue that are announced here. Does that mean that he's literally opening up prison doors? Well, in some circumstances, he does literally open up prison doors. We know that. But... Here in this um, portion, we're learning that the prison doors are not physical. They're spiritual, and they're inside of the people. Egypt can't rebuild itself without mental, spiritual shackles and chains on the people. God got the people out of Egypt. He rescued them from that, and then he spends a very long time getting the Egypt out of the people and he cannot do it if the people are not willing to change if the people don't want to have anything to do with God they won't make the proper changes so here we have the rescue part we're all everyone in the Christian world that I know of is cool with that they want God to rescue them but they're unwilling to take up the empowerment part because the empowerment takes work and chastening but he chastens those that he loves So he's going to do this by, we're not going to go over this, but he's going to do, this is one of the ways that he does these things by proclaiming the acceptable year of Yah and the day of vengeance of our God. That's judgment. We're going to get into that in a, a future video, uh, but that's, that's how he does it. And then this is the empowerment part. Those who are mourning, he's going to comfort them. If you're mourning, you, you can't do much. He's going to comfort you. This is a fulcrum point here, switching gears, moving towards that empowerment part. He's not just going to comfort everyone who mourns. He's going to comfort those who mourn in Zion. The people who are in Zion are Israel, the people with the, with the proper understanding, with the right heart. Here's the, uh, here's the empowering. We've got ashes. We can't do anything with those ashes. He's going to give us beauty in place of those ashes. And what do we do with that beauty? Well, we rescue and then we empower others. Uh, he's going to give us the oil of joy in place of mourning. He's going to give us the garment of praise in place of the spirit of heaviness. Those are the things that are within us. Those are the wicked treasures that are inside of people. He wants your ashes, and he's going to give you beauty for them. Give him your mourning, and he'll give you the oil of joy. Take your spirit of heaviness and sell it to him and he will give you the garment of praise if you've been rescued why does he do all this so that we can be called trees of righteousness the planting of Yah that he may be glorified I hope that this has opened your eyes so Yeshua's got this mission statement in the New Testament, and we see his mission statement being played out in his mission for the people that he led. After he died, it continued to, uh, to play out for them. We see it playing out with the apostles. And here in the Old Testament, we see the very same thing playing out. He rescues people, then he empowers them. Yeshua is the lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world. No man comes to the Father except 
through him. Okay, so that's, that's the overarching theme of Ki Tisa. It is a fulcrum point that moves us from rescue to empowerment in Yeshua. And this next video, we are, now we've set ourselves up to speak about judgment and mercy and looking at proper judgment and proper mercy. You should see a card for that popping up on your screen. If you don't, there should be a card for it in the description. If you're watching this video right as it's coming out, it might be a day or two before it gets there, but I promise you it's there or going to be there.